Hi everyone, welcome back to Window Chats with Robin, the Instagram live podcast where I sit by my window and chat with very interesting people. I want to promote the chat, but I also want to know if it'll work with Naomi so I can promote it afterwards should Naomi be able to join. This may be the third time we're trying it. I have faith, third time is the charm. Yes. Uh, if not, we will figure this out accordingly. Life is fun, people. Uh, yeah, it does not get easier. But should Naomi be able to join, that would be very exciting. If not, I'll just keep saying nice things about her because I think she's awesome. Uh, but let's see if I can invite her in or not. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, this is me hemming and hawing while I'm like, <laughs> Naomi, why can't I see you? Let's try and send requests. It'll work. I have faith. I'm praying a lot. I get very religious with Instagram lives. I feel like I've sent a request and it will work. I'm sending out positive vibes in the universe. That's a thing, right? That's what I hear as a thing. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I know. I wasn't feeling that positivity on that one. Okay, let's be more positive. It will absolutely work. Yeah, I didn't believe that either. All right. Well, that's fine. The struggle is real. Uh, what else to do? If anyone knows how to help me get Naomi on this Instagram live, please let me know. <laughs> guys. Oh, gosh. Hello. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, da, da, da. My God, I'm just hemming and hawing now, guys. I have, I'm feeling, I'm feeling negative. I'm not going to lie. I'd like to stay positive. I'm just not feeling the positivity. <laughs> Will it work? Oh my gosh, still not able to join. This is, I, oh, 11, 11. It does have to work, right? Did we do I, it? Oh my God, there was so much like ranting going on before. Naomi, hi. Okay, be cool, Robin. It worked. I was like, so not believing it worked. This is, this is all. We got you on and oh my that's gosh. done. And now, we're, now we end it. That's what happens. But. Oh, okay. That was really fun. I really enjoyed talking okay. with you, Robin. This yeah. has been really, really insightful and inspiring. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Not a problem. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for doing yeah. this, though. I don't know why it wasn't working. Oh uh, yeah. I, you know what? This is like classic social media connection. And I have to tell you, it brought me, like when we first started Firecracker Department, brought me to tears to tears. I'd be doing this kind of thing and be like, I'm just trying to engage people. I'm just trying to build a community. And then Instagram would have other ideas. And I'd be like, Oh, screw you. Instagram. Right? Yeah, but we did. And we're here together. But I'm, I mean, already, I'm just like, I didn't think it would work. And then I have my plan B and plan C. I'm like, okay, maybe Facebook, maybe YouTube. How do we do this? Uh, but it worked. Okay. I'm just again, this is just me Okay, how can we communicate? They, Naomi, thank you so much. Again, the improvert. That's why you won awards, right? Like, look at you just figuring I mean, things out. I didn't what improvise. You improvise, buddy. This is all on you. See, here's the problem. My improv for the first two fails were great. But then by the third one, I had yeah. lost all face. So the one, this one that I will say is just like negative Nancy in the beginning and not to give Nancy a negative connotation. That's just... I feel bad, right? bad like all the people named Nancy yeah. are negative, but I don't think they are. I know a lot of positive Nancys, but that's not why you're here for my rant, right? Uh, but Yeah, there's going to be a lot of Nancys writing in about this. Oh, yeah. They'd be like, excuse me, Robin, I am the most positive person. I'd be like, I apologize. Positive Nancy. We're going to start a thing. Yeah. Neutral Nancy. Yeah. Maybe and then just neutral. Neutral Nancy? I mean, p positive Patty's going to be pissed, but yeah, you're oh. gonna, we'll figure it out. That's true. I've never heard Can't positive learn. Patty, Penelope. Made it up. Made, made it up. Oh, oh well, that's what. Oh, look at you, improv. Okay. <laughs> so wait, have you done Instagram lives before, and you've dealt with the fails? That is this. Okay, they're terrible. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just frustrating. But you know what? At the end of the day, you know, you're just trying to connect, and like you've got some great followers, and you do what you can, and everybody understands. You know, you're doing great. Oh, thanks. I really just needed positive affirmations from you. So now, now we're good.
But Naomi, before, for I think it was the second version uh, before it didn't work. But I was sharing with the Instagram community essentially how I heard of you and then eventually connected. Like, I heard of you through my younger brother, David, and he was on set for Kiss and Cry. And he said, there's this very talented actress who's not only talented, but the nicest person he's ever met. And he is very selective with handing out nice comments. So I'm like, okay, okay, Naomi yeah. Sneakus, interesting. All right, let's look into her. And then I find out that you also did the casting room series with Stephanie Gorin, which was hilarious. I, I saw that in a workshop. I'm like, so this is very entertaining. That was well done. And it won awards as it should. And then I learn about the firecrackers community. I'm like, what is happening? How do you do so much? I just, that's an open-ended question. It's a big one, but I, I find you very impressive. Yeah, you know what, folks, people say that a lot to me. Like, how do you do so much? First of all, like, the casting room was, like, a hundred years ago. Kiss it and was Cry so was a though. tiny chunk of time. Yeah, no, no, but, like, you know, everybody's juggling. Everybody's spinning plates. Um, I uh, I may have a, the capacity to spin a couple more plates than normal folks, and that's just, I don't know, that's just training. That's just starting with two plates and adding a plate and adding a plate, and suddenly you have 30. And I will also say, I'm not doing any of this by myself. Like, Firecracker Department is a community because of the core folks that are helping build it. So it's definitely, definitely not something I'm, I'm doing on my own. And also, you have an I'm amazing like team. Okay. Oh, it froze. Oh. <laughs> I'll pause in there. That was very confusing. <laughs> oh. See the pause? Oh. It's like, also, I love, and then it was a pause. Honestly, after today, I'm feeling like maybe I'll find a different platform because uh, this, is, uh, this is a journey. We're going on a journey no. together. It's on me. It's all my fault. Um, I was going to say I love what I'm doing. Like, I love, I love our job so much that it's not, it's not work. It's just like I'm so I'm, – I'm crazy about acting. I'm, 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 like, wild about acting. I'm wild about, like, having an opportunity to build this community and – we got Winnie Wong here, who's part of the core firecrackers. So, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a pleasure. And I think people like, like good people like gravitate towards you because you're just sending out so much positivity and encouragement. And I just again, I was so I've never I don't know why I hadn't heard about the firecrackers until this pandemic. And it's just these amazing women, and it's women supporting women or women identifying women. Like just like everyone's there for you you have a question you can reach out no judgment it's 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 so it's so beautiful it really is thanks yeah i'm pretty proud of what we're building and as i said like there's this amazing team of like like winnie wong and sydney nielsen gosh i can start but then that would take up all our time um and yeah i think i think also it started it started as a podcast right so it was a podcast first in order to create a platform because when the trump hit the fan we were like, what do we do? We got to just, we got to just make more platforms for our voices. We got to get louder. So the podcast made sense at that time. And then it quickly grew into this community. And now we're like, talk about spinning plates. We're spinning a lot of plates, but it's really, um, it's really exciting. We're building something really purposeful. And uh, I don't know, I'm really excited to see what we do next. I am too. Every time I think you guys, you know, you, you just keep adding more. I'm like, of course, of course they're adding more. Why, why wouldn't they do this too? I love it. Yeah, you got a problem when you have like the founder that has an improviser brain and says yes to everything. And then I think we, were, we were laughing the other day. I'm like, what do, what do I do with like new ideas? And people were like, oh boy. But I, you know, like we all have new ideas and, and that's what spurns other ideas. And, um, and you don't want to squelch any of those. Yeah. I mean, you got to do every idea. That's why, you know, it's the endless to-do list of, oh yeah, this new idea. Oh, yeah, but what about the old one? Uh, I mean, I'll get to that, too. That's, uh, let's just keep piling yeah, on. get to all. Yes, yeah. yes. I love that. But so you also have, if I'm not mistaken, another pod, like you're a podcast person. You have that one with, uh, I think you're, I, was, I don't know, what's the term? Your partner? Is, is that the correct term now? Okay. We're fully into the husband-wife world. Oh, okay, cool, because I call, yeah, but, yes. okay, yeah, yeah, so the hot beat, yes, of course. Uh, yeah. So how is, how is that in terms of working with the spouse? Yeah. You know, we started, we started working together. Well, I mean, we started our relationship working together at second city and then we started a company, the national theater of the world. And then that's kind of grown into Barrowman Sneakers where it's sketch and podcast. 
Um, so we've kind of always had working together as part of our relationship. Um, that's not to say that it's always easy because you put two creative brains together and then you also put the fact that I take everything super personally, <laughs> which is not helpful. Um, but uh, hey, it's Susan Schaefer. Uh, so yeah, so we figure things out as we go. And I'll tell you again, like it's worth the effort because there's really nothing I enjoy more than being on stage with Matt Barham. It's really like easily one of my purest joys. That's so cute. I want to see this one day. So here's a question. Did, uh, did Matt feel a little left out when it's like this women's only firecrackers? Whoa, you don't want me involved in something? Excuse me. I don't know. No, he was relieved. He was like, oh, go, go do your thing. Get off my case. Um, no, he's, gosh, he's so supportive. I think if anything, he was like, because when it, when it initially went, I was like, we were all just working so hard and it was taking up a lot of my energy and time. Now it's a little bit more balanced, but it's still pretty um, full, full time. Uh, so it was just balancing life and firecracker department and making sure that I don't, um, you know, uh, be unbalanced as we can all be when we are passionate about things. For sure. Did you, here's a question I like to ask anyone that's a comedian. Uh, did you always know you were funny? Um, n no, no. I always knew that I loved making people laugh, but I don't think I knew that I was funny. Like I knew that if I did certain things, um, like there's this classic sneakers family dinner where my father recorded the family dinner and he did it like surreptitiously. And you can hear in the background that I was like, Hey folks, look this way. And my mom's like, Naomi, take that plastic bag off your head. But I was like, I'll do anything, anything to get some attention, and some laughs. So um, I don't think I knew it was funny. But then I, I think I had a couple of cheerleaders along the way that were like, hey, you're really funny. You should keep doing this. Like folks like Diana Front Francis and Ellie Harvey in Vancouver and Glenn Sumi at Now Magazine, like in my early days at Second City was like, this is, this is something you should be doing. So it helps to have cheerleaders to reinforce your, your passions. Well, I mean, also, you progressed from not having to put a bag over your head. So there you go. I'm not saying that's not coming up in a new Instagram series. <laughs> but there will have to be things in the bag to make it that much more challenging. I mean, please follow me on TikTok for Get That Bag Off Your Head series. Hey, it's Liam. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I think I've got some distance to go with that plastic bag comedy show. Well, not as we're talking because... now, I think there is potential. Yeah. Yeah, it's riding the line of, is she going to suffocate or is she just going to make us laugh? Like, it's kind of a daredevil stunt. And then you do, like, either Ziploc or Glad. Which brand? Depends oh, on who sponsors you. Robin, right? you're going to produce this with me. Thank it's you. It's happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And then even if it's then we can add other sponsors on the bag. Oh, we are going to get money for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, tied. Yes. You have to wash your clothes after you're done suffocating. Oh, God. That's ridiculous. Now you're thinking, see? Now you're starting to spin some plates. This is how it happens. You got new oh, ideas. God. These are some weird plates, Naomi. I don't. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, I thought of this the other day when I thought you. I'm so proud of you because you don't have to. You're already at a point where you don't even have to tell people how to say your last name. Like you, you know when people are. You know it's oh na yeah Naomi Sneakers of course. No one no one questions it. I don't know. I don't know if you feel that way, but I just thought as I'm typing in your poster, I'm like, will anyone struggle with pronouncing this? No, everyone knows Naomi. That's, you know what? I hadn't even thought about that, but maybe you're right. I mean, people still have trouble spelling it. Um, Naomi, even some people are like, I'm going to throw an I at the beginning. It's like, really? It's Naomi, not Naomi, but that's me. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some Naomi's in the world. I I'm uh, Robin with a Y, so I feel your pain, but yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I don't know. I had an agent once that told me to change my last name. And I was like, well, I don't think so. That doesn't really work for, for me. But yeah. Well, did, they make, did they make a suggestion? Because that's what I would throw it back at them. What would give me a good last name? I was like, what? You changed your last name is what I should have said to them. <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a very healthy <laughs> partnership. And you're still yeah. your agent today. Like... That's right. And we've been happily agenting ever since then. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love the things people tell you. I really do. You know, certain things that you don't forget and you go, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, but okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, d I didn't take it. I was like, you know what? 
I like my last name. I'm not going to, that's not going to happen. I don't know how serious they were, but it, it didn't fly for me. Oh, good on you. Got to own your brand. Right? Um, can I ask you, okay, only because it's your profile picture on Instagram. How did the headshot session go when you decided to, or did you add it after the fact? Is this part of your headshot where you have a turtleneck or did you just add a mask on because of COVID? <laughs> oh, I actually yeah. am very did curious that's... about this photo. Okay. That's, um, that's David Lays who did that's the photo shoot with me. And I don't know. I, we were like, you know, David Lays is super playful in, in his photo shoot. So we were screwing around. So that's been my like Instagram shot forever. And then COVID came and they're like, oh, how appropriate and like so topical. So um, I hadn't even thought about changing it, but maybe it's time to like, like reveal the lower part of my face. It'll be like Show a slow like reveal. A... This is another reel. The slow, if you yeah. still have the turtleneck, guys, this is, that's what? Time. She has six lips. The yeah. unmatched six <laughs> And a third ear. Uh, that that's right. is. That's, just don't know. I would love to be during part of that photo session of, I'm going to, I'm just going to do this. Right. Well, because, but then you draw people to your eyes. Isn't it all about the eyes and a headshot, right? You are ahead of your time. Oh my gosh, Robin, you are seeing insight to me that I had no idea that I had. I so thank you. Yeah, that's, you're doing a good job. No, you got to take the credit. Check. Yes, just <laughs> check, verify, or whatever that mm -hmm. is. Uh, I, I know words. I don't know how to get it done. Oh, I mean, Naomi, you just got to pretend like, yeah, I knew COVID was going to happen. So I told David, like, look, I can't tell you yeah. why I'm doing this, but I'm doing this. And then Trust when, me. when this happened, you're like, I got this, guys. Mm -hmm. I predicted the future. You're welcome. Mind blown. <laughs> yes. But isn't it, have you ever done or created a comedy sketch that you think it's funny, but then it ends up predicting the future? You know, when you see the Simpsons and they predict, future. I'm curious. I don't know if that happens. Okay. Um, no, I've never, I don't think I've ever predicted the future with a comedy sketch. I don't know, maybe, gosh. Well, you know what, Matt and I used to do a bunch of relationships sketches at Second City. So maybe that is the only prediction I need because now he's my husband. Oh, there you go. Yeah. How did he propose? Can I ask that? Was it creative you know, he... or was it kind of just like on the couch? Yo, let's do it, girl. I don't know why he talked no. like that. Okay. <laughs> yo let's do it girl and I'm like yo dude, let's do yo, it yo yo kind of cool yeah. um he no Matt is very romantic he does things he does things up he does he does things in a special way um he let's see how did this happen well it was my birthday and he said let's go out for dinner and then as the day progressed he was like let's go for like a for like a nice dinner where we get dressed up and I'm like okay that'll be fun but then as the day progressed and I'm like wouldn't you rather just order Chinese food and watch movies on the couch and he was like uh well yeah oh, okay okay but you have to come with me to get the Chinese food I was like you got it but I'm not taking my pajamas off so we got in the car to get and my pajamas are like yoga pants so they're not like you know ice cream cones or whatever and then he he pulled into he was like you know what it's your birthday let's do something that's a little bit special and um he pulled into it was the uh the Soho house on um Blue Jays Way and Wellington, that little boutique hotel. And he's like, mm -hmm. let's pop in and have like a fancy cocktail. It's your birthday. And I was like, you know what? Let's do this. I got my pajamas on, but put me in the corner. Let's have a fancy cocktail. And he pulled into the driveway and he's like, okay, look, we're actually going to stay here tonight. I booked a room. And I was like, fun. Okay, great. Right? So he takes me to the room and he'd gone in earlier and set it up with like strawberries and champagne. And I open, I'm like, what's going on? This is like not how rooms usually look when you check into a hotel. And then he got down on one knee and just changed my life. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that yeah. so much. Oh my gosh. That's, I also, I here's the thing that I love too, how you kept trying to derail. And you're like, you just wouldn't, you didn't yeah. see it coming. You're like, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, this is all I want to do. And then it's like, oh, yeah. but I'm so glad we didn't. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Here, I, I mean, through. why? I, here's what I always wonder about strawberries and champagne. I understand the champagne, but why the strawberry? Is there not a better fruit that pairs with the champagne? Okay, let's brainstorm on that, Robin. Like, yeah. uh, like, 
blueberries. I mean, that's sort of in the same family. Mangoes? I don't think so. Well, you have to cut them. Bananas? But although gotta be banana cute. could work because you don't have to wash them, right? You just kind of very again during COVID, very clean, right? You have its own little peel as protection, and then you start eating the banana. Although that that could turn into something more, so that that got I'm gross. A lot, a lot of letters about this, Robin. This so is this is. I mean, it's there's no writing, but it will not be uh, kid friendly, or maybe it is. Yeah. I think every child should have potassium. I'm, that's why I'm pushing bananas. Good for you. Good for you, you for having home you believe in, you know? It's my strong stance. Pineapple. Yeah. Pineapple would be good. Hey, let's do a little taste test sometime. Oh, my. <laughs> what pairs best with champagne? I like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Why not a vegetable? Get your greens in. Yeah, that right? Be, that's a terrible idea. You're just saying yes and being very polite. That's a terrible idea. No. What, broccoli and champagne? It's disgusting. <laughs> A and then what are you supposed to have a romantic look. dinner after like oh, i'm gonna have a romantic right. eat it <laughs> having broccoli and you know, in your teeth no 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 no. but then the strawberries will get in your teeth too huh i mean at that point i think when you're having strawberry and champagne you're not really caring what's in your teeth you know what i mean i only say this because as you were describing that evening my husband at one point we went to you know you go to the hotel room you get the champagne and I, re I never realized at that point that I'm not a fan of chocolate strawberries. And I thought, whoo, what's wrong with me? Why don't I like this? Because yeah. everyone's supposed to like it, right? It's, yeah, chocolate strawberries and champagne. Yeah. Hmm. No, there has to be another alternative. A... Maybe just the chocolate. Yeah. Maybe, like, I don't want the fruit. No, but then it's like you need the pairing. Anyways, this is I'm a... a... Of, like juice in the champagne. I don't always like champagne on its own, but you throw some like fancy juice in there like mango pineapple i'm like i'm all for that i, like I that. mean gosh we could talk all day robin this is i feel that's the thing and this is this is what they came to hear the debates on champagne never mind right. Naomi. uh let's let's brainstorm they don't even care yeah i mean it's intriguing conversation this is also another look this is i have like three sketches based on this chat right now this is what happens when i talk to fellow comedians I don't have time. I, I don't have time to write more. My husband's going to be like, stop adding ideas. Just get your other ones done. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> yes. See, now welcome to my world. You completely understand. Yeah, but here, what happened, yeah. you're, you're married to a fellow creative. And again, my husband's creative, but like he, not, as, not for a living. So what do you do when you're both creative? Like, how do you stop the other one from being creative? Whew. Although you can't, you can't Why stifle creativity. To... I know. As I'm saying that, why would you do that? Um, I'm having a no, conversation no. with myself and you're here. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad to participate. I'm glad to observe the conversation thank you, you're having with you. yourself. Um, no, I will say, I'll say that most of our dates become like production meetings in some ways. So we have to like, you know, balance that. But um, I don't know. We, I feel really lucky to be married to somebody that has the creative brain that Matt has and and he's always writing, so we'll, like, share what we're doing and be able to support each other if it's not something that we're collaborating on. I love that. I find, too, and again, look, I, my husband gives my best ideas when I'm writing. Now, now we've reached a point. I don't know if you struggle with this in your relationship, but I finally reached a point where he gives me feedback, right? Not like everything's good. It's like, no, no, here's how you make it better, or what on earth was that? I'm like, I don't know. Thank you for questioning, because I would have put it out there. I still sometimes put it out there and it's, and it, he's always right. It, it's the ones that he says aren't good are not good. I agree. Yeah. But uh, you know, yeah. sometimes it's hard to take the feedback. So. Oh my God. It's impossible. I've only, I mean, we've been married for, I don't know, six or seven years together for longer. And it's only now that I'm able to understand that his notes are coming from a place of like, I want you to be better as opposed to, I want you to know I hate you. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> that's, I mean, clearly, that's why he married you. So he can tell you every day how much he hates you. That's, that's what marriage exactly. is. Oh, my God. It's so ridiculous. I was such a baby. And then he'd give me notes. And all I would be like, You're, don't, don't, don't get in my head. And like, oh, my God, we'd have such fights over getting our di my auditions on tape. Oh, and my God. This, I, when he's the reader, oh, that was, so that painful. honestly was questioning my marriage. Where I'm like, I don't know if we're going to survive COVID right now. Because this is a yeah. bad... <laughs> It's hard. But I mean, every note yep. he gave me was good. And then I'd end up paying for coaches that would tell me the same thing. I'm like, I got to save some money and just listen to my husband. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's good at what he does. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God, you're so right. Yes. 
but it, it is hard. It is hard to take feedback um, or even to just, cause again, it's when you're so, you have this idea for a character and you're doing it and like, this is really, I, but again, you should be amenable to feedback, but it's so hard sometimes. You're like, this is the best way to play it. And you're like, oh I, I, yeah, there are other options, but here's why this one's better. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, why do we get to be so precious though? Like, why can't we just be open-minded to like, maybe there's a different way to do it. Like, and why not just try it? It's not like somebody saying like, hey, I have a note. Why don't you try cutting off a limb and doing it without a limb? Like, it's not like I'm gonna- Is this for your saw audition? Life. Is that what happened? You went full method and I cut did. off a limb? That's why you booked it. I mean, no one right. needs the fourth toe, you're fine. Uh, got you the right? role. Okay, yeah. I mean, that was the note I did take. Uh, yeah, so why not just try things? Try it, uh, like there, there's nothing that, like that, so it kind of goes back to the whole world of yes anding things. Like just say yes to things and then see where they go. Unless of course it's like, hey, let's jump off a bridge and not care what we're jumping into or let's do something that's death defying. I don't think that, but like this is not, we're, we're actors, we're not surgeons. Only surgeons can jump off a bridge? I, okay. Oh, you didn't know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, missed yeah. the memo, and now I know. Well, I will. I will refrain from jumping off any other bridges in the future. Thank you. Yeah. This is. A, yeah. This will be uh, the disclaimer only. Okay. I, have, <laughs> I have completely like connected like a jumping off a bridge with like surgery, where I'm always like, you know, when people get stressed about things with work, I'm like, you know what? We're not standing at the rooftop waiting for a helicopter to deliver an organ. Let's just take a breath, mm -hmm. you know. So that's. Uh, that's gladly not my job, thankfully. That's That would be such, I have never auditioned for a scene like that, but I can only imagine the stakes in that scene. Ooh. Yeah. And also like, do you do you mimic to like the helicopter coming in? Oh. Like, and have someone yeah. blasting wind on you. That's that's how you do it. That's how you book the role. They see the wind. 100%. And then you have to take someone's actual organ. You gotta really go. You don't need that kidney husband. Thank you. Right. Okay. Right. No, you're you're onto something, Robin. Like we have some sketches to write, obviously, <laughs> after this. <laughs> there, there's a lot of potential. Oh God, this is hilarious. I I love chatting with a fellow comedian. It makes me laugh so much. Don't you miss performing so much? Aren't you like craving to get on stage? I'm like, it's it's jonesing. weird. It's weird not having that feedback. And I know I've watched a bunch of people perform on Zoom too, and they write it in the comments. But you know, I honestly, one of the things I miss the most are those unique laughs. You know, when you mm. hear someone laugh, you're like, what on, is that a laugh? Are they crying? Oh, what is that? Or I don't know. I, but I see, and I, I remember talking to someone and they actually have created a unique laugh to be an audience because they're a performer as well. And they hate when people don't laugh. So they have their special laugh and it's yes. just this like robust over the top laugh to show the people performing that they appreciate them. And I thought that's very creative. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like, you can't, you can't, well, you have to really make sure that you marry a laugh that you can live with. Otherwise you're not going to want to be funny. And I remember having a boyfriend once that was like, he was a <laughs> laugher. And I was like, Oh, and I honestly was like, trying not to say stuff that he found amusing because he'd be like, <laughs> like oh no. no 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 you gotta like the like the laugh you marry this is this is marriage advice this is very helpful it's true though right, right? you want to have comedy in your life and if i don't like the way you're laughing no thank you that's date no number kidding. one i bring all my jokes no okay all right i see yeah. nice teeth good okay because i want to look at you when you okay all right Good, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling nothing too over the top that you're scaring people in the restaurant, but still acknowledging the comedy. Okay, and a keeper. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like that you started with teeth. Oh yeah, well, I, there's some dentists in my family. I noticed that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, you gotta take home teeth to your family at some point. Yeah, no, that's all that, right? They don't look at the face, they just look at the teeth. Okay, good dental hygiene, approved. Uh, yeah, I get it, I get it. Where can we fix that, that mouth? I get it. I mean, that's also another weird sketch of like people just staring at teeth. Like no one's acknowledging the rest of the face. That's very weird. Well, but that, I mean, that kind of happens on set, you know, like with hair and makeup and wardrobe, like nobody sees you. They're just looking at their work and you could have like hair person, you could have like ketchup on your face and they wouldn't care as long as your hair is right. <laughs> and, then, and then you do the whole thing there. Um, can you tell someone, can you tell Naomi to floss? Uh, yeah. We didn't check her so smile. Always. The lipstick. Great. 
but the smile Always there's tell like me. the strawberry. She had strawberry and champagne. That's what happened. Yeah, so it was it was right I'm okay. I'm good. Okay. Gappy, Isn't very it? gappy. See, I can't. You can't. You can't cut your nails too much because this is like permanent floss. Oh, I never use my little. Yeah. You know what? I did a photo shoot once at Second City, and the headshots were like those big, big ones that were going to go up in the lobby. So they were like twice the size of your actual head. Uh, finished the photo shoot. They got printed. They got put up. Food in my teeth. <gasps> in my teeth. Oh. I'm, I'm like that. almost laughing because it could seem like it was intentional if it's Second City. Right. And so you made no. a strong character but choice. Like kale that you would be like, oh, that's purposeful. It was just like probably, I don't know, a hot dog bun, something, something real classy. It had to be uh, not a hamburger bun. It was a hot dog bun. You didn't even eat the I hot mean, dog. That's why it's confusing. It's true. It's so true. I really want, mm -hmm. I've never seen this photo. I need to see this photo. Uh, will they put it in the new Second City building? I really want them to just circle the hot dog bun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. I don't even know what happened to those photos. Maybe somebody's using it as a... Uh, as a dartboard somewhere, who knows? Well, it's what, what not to do, right? This is, you know, when people have a headshot checklist, it's make sure you don't have food in your teeth. Exhibit A, Naomi. Uh, that's Or if you want food in your teeth, make it bigger. Like a, a dark green kale, as you were saying. Yeah, yeah. You got some great followers here, Robin. You've been doing this for a while, hey? This window. Oh, I, yeah. I, people are really, really supportive. Uh, this yeah. has been since January, yeah. Good for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's fun. Like, you gotta do something like this. You gotta commit to it. A lot of people talk about like, oh, I'm gonna do a regular Instagram thing, and then nobody does it. But you're doing it, right on. I mean, I'm doing it. You can see it. the tech still does not want to work in my favor, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I would blame that tech entirely on me because I am not in the city, so that means that my Wi-Fi is challenging. So blame it all on sneakers. I mean, you're every I, every time you're doing. Are you still on set now? You were doing something. No, uh, that's wrapped. It was doing the Disney Zombies 3. Yes, okay. I think I saw them join too. I'm like, look at this, Naomi. The zombies are following you. I didn't want to get creepy in the beginning because you just joined. I'm like, Naomi, there's zombies watching. Be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's some, uh, yeah, that, the zombie fans are adorable and fun and so, like, so supportive. They're, they're fantastic. I loved watching you in that net. Uh, was it work it? I, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it and I forgot it. Okay. And it was no, just so, well, no, because you know what I loved? It was you and, oh my gosh, who's the, there was another actress and I can't remember. Uh, but it was, you're just so you. And it's, and I think that's what I, I love. Every time I watch you, it's just you being you. And I think it's so hard for people to stay authentic to who they are that when I see you on screen, I'm like, it's just Naomi, like playing a character, but like I see Naomi. And that's so hard for, I don't know, I don't know how you managed to do that. Because I know every time I audition for something, it's like, okay, how can I not be myself? But I have to learn how to own who I am and bring more of myself to the table. And I just, I love, I love watching you. I'm really impressed with you. Even that thing Robin, you do with yeah. Emily. I'm like, look at you coming in as a diva. It was so fun. <laughs> I love that so much. That's so interesting because we've been talking about that in my acting class about like how we should, like you're not pretending, you're just being. And you're revealing like an element of yourself. So like looking at that diva, like I, I got some diva in me. That's part of like who Sneakus is. And I turn up the volume a little bit for that character. Um, and then something like Work It, I think is a little bit, you know, it's, it's easier to reveal because it's sort of like, um, you know, like a nurturing mom and a little, you know, it's, it's not as like diva-ish, but it's all in us. As long as we can figure out who we are, then we can just reveal that on screen. And then people will be like, oh, I understand that. I understand that diva because I get, I have that quality too, or I've seen that quality before. Have you ever wondered how many kids you've had to date on screen? I like to add the numbers in my head. So it's cool. alarming. Okay. I tried to date kids because I'm married. That's, so, that's good. Okay. Your point. Uh, no. How many kids I've had like as a mom role? Oh, that's a good, I don't know. Um, Cause I did a bunch of work with like um, sinking ships. So like, Oh yeah. The, like those I was a mama bunch in that world too I don't know I mean I don't have kids of my own so um it's easier but to then you can like pick screen. and choose your favorite kids right like, yeah mm, plus you okay. can feed them but then I also do you judge parenting because I enjoy when I see people on set and like when they're my kid I'm like you were raised right 
Like you're doing a good job. I don't say that to them. I just think it in my head. I'm like, you, you got a good head on your shoulders versus the other ones. I'm like, mm, a little diva. That's, uh, yeah. we got to talk to your parents. I'm not going to, but if I, if I was a concerned fake parent, I would talk to them. Yeah. I mean, when they're kids, I don't know. I don't really like, I don't think I write them off as like, oh, that's who you are yet. Like, cause gosh, this business is hard enough on adults, let alone kids. Gosh, I can't imagine being a child and having to deal with like the rejection and the hours and the stress and everything. Um, did you start off but, as a child actor, Naomi? I mean, I did theater as a kid, but mm -hmm. I didn't do, I wasn't like a serious actor. I didn't do anything like. Well, cause, like cause I wonder as a kid, if you know, you're getting rejected, right? Like, you know, when you do musical theater and you don't get the part you want, but you're still in the play. So you're still part of something, but I don't no know. Way. I don't know. No, no, you know, Robin, you know, when yeah, they you probably you do. I, I've said saying that. I'm like, yeah, I was very aware. I was aware. Yeah. Uh, like. If you yeah, those, to do the part of Anna Green Gables and you get the cast instead as dancer number two, I mean, not even dancer number one, super rejection. Yes. But then you have that positive parent that goes, at least you weren't number three. What is that? Uh, there was no three, Robin. Thanks oh, a okay. lot. Well, there you, there, there you go. Okay. Yeah, but they don't know that. You say it wrote out of the script. And uh, yes. yeah, I would make up, there'd be a lot of lies if I was, I don't know how parents of child actors do it. I think I would just be making no. up these whole stories of why they didn't get it. Yes. Well, you know, the child, uh, they have a rapport with the director that they've never met. That's what happened. And I use the word rapport because they should be smart. Uh, I am also not a parent. I don't know. Agreed. What to do. Okay. <laughs> well, I, uh, I like everything. It's, it's very, you know, it's so fun too, though, when you get to, because again, you said you were doing the kids shows. It's so fun. I don't, I used to watch the kids shows. And then knowing that you could be those characters that those kids are watching and also, you know, like kind of ruining the parents' day because how redundant are some of those shows. But it's just, it's so fun to, to know that you are going out there and kids are taking it in. Because I can still remember all those shows I watched as a child. And it's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, you think about that sometimes where you think of like the shows that you grew up with and what will the shows be now? Will you be in them and be like, oh my gosh, Remember when that old lady, and I was like 30, you know what I mean, was in that show? So it is. Hi from Spain. Oh, I know. She's got some so cool. international folks here. Yeah. I, thanks for joining us. Uh, for those of you just joining us, this is Naomi Sneakish. She's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I called you a powerhouse in the description because that seemed like a strong word when I was promoting this. I'm like, what's an adjective for Naomi? Powerhouse. But then I'm like, oh, did I just steal from powerhouse casting? I hope not. Uh, it just seemed like a good word. Okay. I mean, you might owe them some royalties, but so I be might. It. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I don't even think they follow me, so I think we're cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. And see, that's the benefit of being a little unknown as a non-union actor. It's like <laughs> I can do things that other people can't. Oh, but then when you hit your stride, you're gonna have so many. Bills They're gonna to watch pay. this again. This is gonna come back to bite me. Oh man. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how much would, uh, yeah, for, you know, the thing that I, I'm not paying you to do, apparently I'm going to owe money from this. So that's, yeah, fair. It's all fair. It, do you still, would you at this point, I like to ask people this too, not to put you on the spot. Would you still do a student film at this point in your career? Yeah, I feel absolutely. Like, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll tell you like for, for a couple of reasons, like one, um, like if the script's fantastic, what a great opportunity to do what I love doing. Uh, two, I was a student once and I, I was always like desperate for, I don't know, getting a leg up. Uh, I kind of blame Colin Mockery a little bit because when we first started doing shows, Colin Mockery came and did a bunch of free shows for our company and helped sort of put us on the map with, because he, he said yes. So um, I'm sorry, Colin McCree? Well, you're going to have to look him up. Yeah. yeah I'm going to Google him. Yeah. Who's is it anyway? Protégé. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, and I also think like, just because it's a student film doesn't mean that it's not fantastic or professionally run. Um, I mean, yeah, I think I'm, I'm always up for doing creative stuff with passionate people. It's the people I, that are like, uh, I don't care that I'm like, well, then I don't care either. Is there is there a dream project that you'd love to work on that you haven't had the chance to yet? Or do you just kind of create it at this point? No, I want to do my own show. 
I'm pitching a bunch of shows right now yes. that are my own. Yeah, that's what oh, really I said important. yes in like a really like golem. Yes, like really <laughs> creepy. Uh, there was excitement and it got raspy. Uh, I do voices. Uh, but that's, <laughs> that's, I love that. What would you call it? Ooh. Oh, wait, actually, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but yes. Well, I mean, Anne I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, Anne Marie's going to be on my crew for sure in some capacity because. Oh, she didn't say she wanted to. So, I, no, I mean, we have to. Just have a choice. That's just the way it goes. Um, yeah, no, it'd be like, oh, I don't really want to work with you. Well, too bad. You're positive. Yeah, sorry. You're lovely. Yeah. So excites me. Uh, no, I mean, I'm pitching right now, so I've got a bunch of different ideas. But, um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like. You know, I think there's a also the always be pitching. Always have like a show idea in your back pocket just in case you're in the right place at the right time and somebody else says, hey, do you have a show? So, um, yeah, we've been pitching for a while. What if you don't have a pocket? What if I'm carried purse? What do I do? Where is the idea? Arm on my phone. Arm. Probably on my phone. Yeah, in your earlobe. Just find a place to put your idea. Yeah. It's interesting. Everyone says in your back pocket, but never the front pocket. I feel like the front pocket is so much more accessible. Yeah, I guess so. And if it's in the back pocket, they could steal it. So you're yeah. right. Uh, I got to change my whole way of life. This is, I didn't want to drop a bomb like that, but. Oh, look, Anne-Marie's already expecting to be picked up. We don't have transport. What are you talking about? We can't afford transport. Oh, for it to be picked up. For it oh, to be right. picked up. We can't. Can you imagine if she was like, I'm already waiting to be picked up? Where's my car? Right. Where's my trailer? Unacceptable. <laughs> I just want to be able to say, I'll be in my trailer. I think I would, look, even if we're talking, if I end up, um, and again, like I agree what you said about student films. And I like to ask people that just to make people aware that there's really good student films out there. And no matter what level you're at, I think like giving back to the community is super important because everyone was yes. a student and learning. And also some of these scripts are really good. And everyone, these are future yeah, filmmakers, right? That, yeah, please, like, if you are listening to this and you are, like, a new filmmaker in any capacity, whether you're an actor, writer, director, like, play the you never know card all the time because you never know. Like, call that person, ask that question, ask for a favor because you never know. Mm -hmm. You're going to be getting a lot of favors asked, I think. You just opened up the floodgates. Very busy. I cannot. I have no time. I'm so sorry. No, no, that's fair. <laughs> that's <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I have, I always have time to answer questions and, uh, and you know, help out in any kind of mentorship way. I know you made time for me for this. We, this is, uh, this is rescheduled a couple of times. So thank you for doing this. Okay. I have time for you for days, Robin. I think you're oh, fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. I always do this like a dog paddle, like yeah, <laughs> I'm swimming above water. I uh, don't want to sink or swim. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. You have like a great natural. Uh, chat gene as well like this oh, is super I, fun thank you oh see that's I know what you I, must I like have like, yeah no you must have some ideas of like what you want to talk about but it's really fun and it feels like oh it's just Robin and Naomi hanging out see that's the thing see I obsessively research people and then I kind of drop bombs in the chat I'm not going to pretend I don't do research but I'm casual about it like hey remember that thing that I just watched that I was like super fangirling over let's talk uh that's, yeah. so that's your job you're professional it's good it's well, good thank you it's hard to take praise, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, put that one I in did... your front pocket. Oh, it is in the front pocket. It's in the it's in the shirt pocket. So it's oh, right by yeah. the heart, left side. Nice. nice. I, I want to ask one question, and then I'll. I know I want to wrap up and let you do your thing because I'm assuming you're you're always doing stuff. Uh, but I did have a question because you were nominated for so much. Uh, how does it work with nominations? I want to know. Do you always have a speech prepared to like you're going to win? And if you don't win, do you carry said speech over to the next round or do you create a whole new thing? I'm just curious. I always make sure <laughs> I'm always ready to win. I love that. I'm always ready to win in life. I mean, there was a time I do remember actually I was nominated for an actor award and it went to uh, Tatiana Maslany and I was so nervous because I'd, I wanted to, I wanted to use my podium. Like I don't, you know, now podiums are a little bit more frequent because of social media. You can have your podium in different ways. But at the time, like, I just thought I want to have this time to really like say something meaningful and that's meaningful to me. Oh God, I was so nervous. I was sitting in the row with my husband and just being like, 
I hope I don't win at this point because I'm so nervous. And then Tatiana won. I was like, oh, thank God. But um, I think, yeah, like always have, always have something that you want to voice, you know, like a, like whenever you get a chance to have a podium, because you never know when that time's going to kind of be. Oh, would you um, take I a political like, stance? Would you be that person that well, gets so, up there? So sure. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know if I would do that. Yeah, I just you feel like, would. thank you yeah, for you acknowledging could. that I'm alive. Um, thank you to everyone in it. Thank you to who supported. Oh, no, my time. Like, I would just go up in an outer panic and be that person. I would have a list because, or no, I would say I wouldn't name anyone except for family members that would be upset if I didn't name them because then I know I'm going to miss a name, you know? Like, otherwise, here's this whole list that I pull out and I don't have that much time. Whoa, it's very, when I watch the Oscars, I go, don't name people. You're going to forget someone no. and they're going to be crying. Like, why did you forget me? So, but I yeah. will tell you, every time I win an award, I forget to thank my husband. And so to a point now, if I was nominated for something, I would just write it on my hand like literally so because I know I'm gonna look at my hand just do not forget because he will be sitting there in the audience just being like Robin you didn't thank me don't you have a ring that should be the reminder you would think that but again I get so <laughs> nervous and I'm looking around and I'm taking people in and you know I probably would be I never understood what people hold the award they feel the weight of it how heavy do you think it's gonna be and if it is heavy put it down why are you holding it yeah. I have a lot of questions about this no, I think it's good. I think you're preparing yourself for the big podium win. And I bet, I bet you that when your time to have speeches, when your time that you get to have a podium, you'll have something. I don't even know if it's political. I just think you'll speak from your heart because uh, it's important. I gotta, I gotta change everything now. Now I don't like the speech that I have. The generic uh, family thank yous. Okay. Well, but how long is the speech? Um. I turned my phone on do not disturb, but somehow Quebec got through. That was, uh, that's a real call. Awesome. There you go. I'm in Toronto. I do not speak French, but Quebec found me. Uh, Salut Quebec. Yeah. Um, uh, bonjour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I was like, what did I say? Um, how long ago did you write that speech? And I think it might need like to make sure you update. I think I write it every yeah. Oscar season when I go, when I yes. see people, you know, you got to write it every Oscar season. Like if I was there, this is what I would do. But here's the thing. I think you have so much adrenaline that even though you have these ideas in your head or you have the speech, you can memorize it, any good actor, but winning something, you go, wait, me? Mm -hmm. Of all the people I was nominated with? <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. I would honestly be British. Well, thank you so much. Um, I just want yeah, to thank everyone. Uh, yeah, I love it. I mean, or you make them laugh. Either like have a good, good, point of view have a good something to say or leave them laughing but he, so you won an award if i'm not mistaken for being a female the best female improviser right the female comedy improviser so did you feel the need to improvise that speech oh um i think i think for that i, I don't think i prepared for that but i knew like what i wanted to say okay yeah, so I think there was, like, it was loose. Now, like, I feel like I've got more to say than I did then or something. But um, I think I think it's important to know, like, a couple people to thank and speak from your heart. Because like, everybody can go up and, and read a list of names, and everybody can say um, what a pleasure it was to work on that project. But, like, dig a bit deeper and see, see you know, what else is in there. This is another, another thing on my to-do list. I do not have time for these suggestions, Naomi. Get okay. going. Got a lot of work to do after this chat, Robin. I love it. I love it. Um, can I ask you, and I hate asking. I, okay, here, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a guest on a podcast and someone asked me this question and I realized I've been asking all my guests to do this. I, like final thoughts. And I think that's the oh. worst thing to ask someone. I didn't realize that until someone asked me that. So I, this is an apology to past guests. So I don't want to say final thoughts, but if there's like maybe a word of encouragement that you could give to an actor trying to find their way in the biz of sorts. What an awful question. Um, it's not, it's, it's more close ended than <laughs> open. Uh, it is a terrible question though. Like uh, we need the smartest word of wisdom from you, uh, if you don't mind. Let me give actually, you my Actually, can final you tell thought. us the dumbest thing? Maybe that's, actually, just tell us a thing. There you go. Like advice, like something, I don't know, gosh. Um, I would say advice to like, like, like artists, maybe, I don't know. Let's, let's okay, narrow it down good. a little bit. 
But like, I would say, um, do the thing that you love. It sounds so ridiculously simple, but like, if you love gardening, find a way to garden every day. If you love acting, find a way of acting every day. If you love uh, writing, directing, whatever, whatever it is, just don't wait for folks to give you the opportunity to follow your dreams. Like, make your own, make your own adventure. I love that. That was great. Uh, that one was rehearsed. I wrote that one earlier. Just oh, I no, I saw you reading me. from the teleprompter. Yeah, that was very... <laughs> I don't want to call you out on it, but whatever. You brought it. You you open up the floodgates, so I'm wondering I don't about know floodgates. Those are weird. Okay. Come on, Rob. Uh, yeah, no, I've been. That's something that I like to. I it's a fortune cookie I read, which was a long one because you can imagine. You a lot and a little. Yeah. I have to eat a lot of fortune cookies for that one. Actually, maybe it was like uh, it came as a set, and so every fortune cookie had a couple words, and then you had to piece it together. Yes. So maybe. The saying that you just said is actually in reverse order is something completely different to someone else. So you choose your own adventure from the fortune cookie. I love it. I love it. Thanks. I'm game. Game for anything that has you on the team. I think you're fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Naomi. Thank you so much for your time for doing this. Uh, oh sure. my God, I'm just so grateful. I, I love everything that you're doing and the communities that you're creating. And I'm going to try it for those of you that have never heard of the firecrackers. I will tag everything accordingly. Um, I don't, it's so funny at this point, like you're so established in my head that I don't think you need to get your name out there, but I'll still push your name out there as much as I can. Cause I love what you're doing and the people yeah. that are part of your core group or just anyone that associates with you. They're also really great people too. So great people attract yeah. great people. And that's, that's, uh, I love it. So fun chatting with you, Rob. What a great excuse to hang out with you. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love a lot of things. I really, I, I've used the word love a lot. Maybe that's my that's quota right. for the day. I'm done. Now oh, I just no, like God. things. They're okay. Subpar, whatever. No. Okay. Keep loving out there. Keep it going. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, I'm really bad at what? ending these awkwardly because um, I keep wanting to talk. I have a problem. I, I'm, it's a 12 step program of learning how to end a conversation. I don't know what that program would be because no one would stop talking. So it would be a really long session. That's really I think funny. you're doing okay. great. I can't wait to see uh, all these folks that have joined the chat. I can't wait to uh, find out what their comments are, uh, have chats on the side, all of that. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's fun. And I've had Yeah, thank you all for watching. With... Really appreciate it. And I will be posting this everywhere. So I'll choose little snippets, maybe. Or maybe I'll just include the whole thing from starting just negativity that fails to the end. Fails at the beginning. Yeah, the tech fails. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. yeah. All right. Bye. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, thanks, Susan. All right. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.